We Got This Africa is an April Communications production with support from Kaiser. Proudly brought to you by Frytol. Frytol, you deserve a life of goodness. <laughs> Girl, listen. We got this. You know when you find the love of your life? That special someone who you know was definitely made for you? Everything is suddenly so perfect. You know you found the one. And it's all well and good until you begin to get resistance from family, friends, and other people in your lives when you decide to come together as man and wife. How important are the opinions of other people when you decide to get married? Today, I'm going to be talking to two amazing ladies who have so much to share on this subject. My name is Na Ashoko, and this is We Got This Africa. We got this. To have a hearty, healthy family. Phytol Sunflower Cooking Oil. Also cholesterol free for tasty, healthy meals. Love your food, love your life. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. You know, sometimes it feels like the opinions of other people don't matter when you are in an amazing relationship and it's just the two of you until the opinions of other people begin to matter. Because as you may know, in our part of the world, marriage is never between two people. It's between two families and sometimes friends and neighbors and their pets. Everyone is involved. So today, I'm really eager to hear all that Hannah and Doreen have to say about this. Hannah, Doreen, you're welcome to the show. Thank you. How are you doing? Very well. Very well. So, okay, let's start from the top. Um, you, you're married. Yeah. You have a book. Yes. Near Divorce. Yes. Interesting title. Very are you near divorce? Now, no. I'm have not, you ever been near divorce? But I've, been, I've, been, I've really been near divorce. I mean, huh. I've gotten to a point where I really wanted to get out. I thought divorce was it. And you didn't option. get out? I didn't. Why? Maybe divine intervention or something happened, but... Okay. <laughs> well, I'm eager to hear all about that. <laughs> and you are divorced. Yes. Happily? Yes. Happily divorced. Say, yes. You're happier now? Yes. Than when you were in your marriage? Sure. Why is that? I think now I am free. I am free. I am at peace with myself. And someone's son is also free. He's also happy. Yes, because he was always accusing me of making him unhappy. So I thought it was best to give him that freedom. So and now he's happy. Yes, he's and happily married. Happy too. Yes. All right. Now, what is just you and your husband, right? It's just the two of you. Sometimes it feels like it's so perfect. Right? By opening it up to bring in other people, their families, their culture, what they believe in, and so on. I know you both have interesting stories to tell. Let's start with you, Doreen. What's your story? I met my ex-husband when I was quite young. How yes. old? <laughs> I was in my teens. Oh. Yes. Yes. I was First the... love? No. But okay. I was in my was teens. Early. Yes. He was the second person, so I met him, we became friends, eventually, fortunately for me, he was in my neighborhood, so it was easier for me to sneak to his end. So you're yeah. seeing him often? Yes, okay. yes. 
and the bond grew stronger over time so we decided to take it to the next level people told my dad that i was in a relationship with this guy whom they don't approve of but you know when you're blinded when you fall in love you tend to forget everything you are you don't listen to what people say so when i met him took him home my dad warned me said no this is not a guy for you focus on what your was studies your dad's problem he felt i needed to finish university i had not entered university then okay so he needed me to finish university then have a job before i get married i saw that as an excuse for my dad just to drive him away that was what i saw but i didn't listen my dad said okay you have to choose between him and us i chose him between so, the boy and your family yes i chose him i loved him so i chose him and things didn't go as planned he was there was this emotional <laughs> he couldn't control his anger that was it he doesn't need any advice he thinks whatever he says is the final nobody has the challenge so it got to a point i became fed up i became fed up but then i was pregnant then i decided to hold on staying we got married then we moved into our own house that was when the real wahala started he goes out comes he goes fridays come monday after work and you know i wasn't working i was in school then i was in uni so it was like i do everything for the house he was so controlling the abuse was what something kind of else abuse? both emotional and physical he was hitting you yes 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 he was a good guy but that part mm -mm, was a no no so it got to a point i became fed up when i was complaining i had no one to complain to because i had chosen him over my family and having realized that i had no one he decided to use that against me so at the least confrontation then there's a, he has to raise his hand or do something or go out and never come i'll be crying you know the house is big just me and the girl my daughter so it got to a point i reported him to the mother uh, already when i met the mother i should have seen it but i was i was so much in love that i was blinded what I should you have seen i met her the first day in their village he wanted to introduce me to her and she just walked away but i thought maybe she, because she didn't know me or she was busy because of the funeral so i had to give her the second chance if i had somebody to advise me then I wouldn't have gone in. Later, she told me she never liked me. So I realized it was true because anytime she comes from the Volta region or from the village, we have to, she's always giving uh, complaints. And when you left for work, I heard your wife doing this call, doing this, doing that. I think you're over pampering her. There are lots of things in the fridge. You are giving her that freedom. And I don't blame her. She never had that, you know. So seeing that coming from the village to the city and seeing those things, she felt that I was over pampered. So every time we had issues, he had to stay out. It got to a point I was like, no, this guy is like, I'm a nice girl. Why do I allow That's this? You are. Why do I allow this guy to bully me? Sort of. How I, old were you then? I was in my 23, 24 then. Yes. So young. Yes. So it got to a point I was like, no. We're moving from one place to the other in, in search of solution to our problems. Oh, he was going with you? Yes. Okay. It's either I go or I get out of the marriage. So I felt, no, a woman has to support the husband. Uh, he had issues with job. So many problems, you know. And we had just one child. After so many miscarriages, like five, six miscarriages. At 23. Yes. Because we we're trying to have another child. And everywhere we went, it was like my family, my family, my family. Where did you go? Went to, <laughs> we went to places <laughs> for solution. Not what for, kind of places? Uh, sometimes pastors. Sometimes so you were seeking spiritual help? Yes. You went yes. to fetish priests? Yes, yes, yes. And they said your family? Yes. They said, and my, my mother-in-law 
also was attending a spiritual church. Mm. So it's like she goes every Wednesday. So when it's Wednesday evening or Thursday and her call comes in, it means there's something to say. So it continued for a while. I realized my husband wasn't happy. He wasn't happy. And uh, I told him I wanted to give him what he wanted because he felt that I was the problem. If he had not married me, he was living his life. He was happy. So I decided one vacation that my daughter has to go to the grandmother so that I visit my big sister in Kumase. I take that opportunity to while away time. He took me to the station, gave me money. I went, we we're communicating, but along the line, someone called me and said, hey, come home. Oh. What is happening there? You better come home. Somebody is drying your husband's boxes and all that. So I was like, so I was like, who is that? He said, come home. I said, okay. Anytime I talk to my husband, he's sweet. He responds, he picks the calls and all that. So when I was coming, I didn't tell him. I came, I saw his car. I'm, then my phone was off. So I decided that, let me get home. Our house wasn't fenced. So I said, let me get home, charge it and call him. That's five minutes from the mirror. So I called him and he said, he... Eh, I'm at a, a shaman. I said, ah, I just saw your car. He said, eh, no, 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 it's not me. He said, I saw your car just now. Please come back and open. I mean, I'm home. He was like, no. And then you better sleep outside because I'm not coming now. Who do I call? I cannot call my dad because I didn't listen. He warned me. And I had to call my uncle. I called my uncle. He was like, okay, okay, I'll talk to him. Then his younger sister she was very very nice to me if i had issues i had to call she was older than me too they were just two so anytime i call fafa she'll be like oh doreen let me talk to him and she treats me good i won't lie so when i called fafa i said ah but why why is it that he's, he doesn't want to come why is he not coming back i said oh i don't know i called my mother-in-law who said mm, your father's house is just here you go home. So he was not in the house? Yes. He was not there. And he was not coming back? He told me he won't come. But I thought, knowing that I was back, he will come. So he wasn't coming back as in he wasn't staying at the house? or No, he was there. But I think I was told somebody, like a lady had moved in. And had someone moved in? I didn't see anybody there. So it was just a rumor? Yes. Okay. So I felt maybe he didn't want me to enter, maybe... If I see the things, maybe. And there was this lady who was close to us. She was an hour too. So she called me and said, look, your things have been packed already. Had your things been packed? When yes, when I came back. I didn't enter, but that was the end of the marriage. I never entered. I slept outside till daybreak. And I was menstruating too. So because of his behavior, people were afraid of him. Our next neighbor was afraid to what, accommodate me because she felt that if my husband should come, my ex-husband should come, it will look like she gave me the information. So she said, no, you please wait here. I sat there. I got myself soiled. I moved to the lady, took my bath. I asked her for a pad. She gave me. He said he came, but he didn't see me. And so he drove back. So... I stayed till daybreak, which was Sunday. I waited. I called him. Please come. Let me just take some clothes and go. He said no. I left around 12 in the afternoon. He called me to come back for my things. I told him, I'm going to my dad's house. So if you are looking for me, come there. He never came. And that was the end of the marriage. Just like that? Yes. Yes. So it got to a point. I felt he needed that freedom. I told Did him. Did you talk about it? We had. We had, actually, we had spoken about it so many times. But I felt that at that point, he needed that freedom. Because he said he cannot make love to me. What will I be doing? Why did he say that? He says anytime he makes love to me, the head aches. So it's I had to... Headaches? But were you sleeping in the same room? Yes. Yes. So I had to give him that freedom. He wasn't happy. And I didn't want to see someone's son suffering because of love. So I had to give him that freedom. Because I told myself it's better for our daughter to see us happy or, than to see the dad dead or the mom dead. So I had to grant him. 
So the two of you were living together yes. alone? Yes, with our daughter. Just the three of you in yes. the house. So there was no interference from his family? The mother usually comes, sometimes three months, four months, two months, she's around. She stays with her. She doesn't, she's widowed, so she comes around. when so she, she comes to stay with yeah, you for a while? Yes. Did that have to do with the troubles? Did the troubles you, you had have anything to do with yes, her being there? Yes, because she was always uh, on the lookout. She wanted to hear everything. And I think she thought the son was giving me too much money. Was he giving you too much no. money? No. Why did she think he was giving you too much money? I don't know. Because sometimes when she asks, oh, Doreen, can you get me this? And I'm, saying, I'm, I'm, I'm like, mom, I don't have the money. You wait when your son comes. She doesn't believe me. I am somebody, I am naturally a happy person. So the least then, whether food or no food, I grow fine. You're fine. fine. <sighs> it's a lot. Yeah. Wow. I'm sorry about all of that. But are you feeling well now? Very well. We've been, we've been divorced like for... That's, this is the fifth year. Five years. Yes. Well, that's some time. Yes. <sighs> you know, love, they say, conquers, conquers all. That's how we say it. Love conquers all. Maybe it doesn't. And maybe sometimes we should lend our ears to the wise counsel of our parents and people who have gone before us. You're watching We Got This Africa. When we come back, I'll talk to Hannah and find out what her story is. Do stay tuned. We got this. have a hearty, healthy family. Phytol Sunflower Cooking Oil. Also cholesterol-free for tasty, healthy meals. Love your food, love your life. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. Kaiser Intelligent System is that magical experience in our lapel range. And it's got a TFT touch control system in this extractor. An induction hot plate with a tempered glass surface powered by the world premium Shot Siran shock resistant and it comes with its grill plates every space of this induction hob can cook and we call it the freezo just touch to control the extractor fan speed the power slide on the induction hob gives you the freedom to regulate its power to your desire magically powerful in extracting heat smoke and harmful odors without being a noisy nuisance in your cooking space and because we care the induction hob has a safety guard and child lock function. Now, look at that food. Kaiser knows how to bring the best in every cook. Kaiser, power in action. You're watching We Got This Africa. This is our episode on marriage and the opinions of other people. I am in the studios with Doreen and Hannah. And Hannah, you're just about to tell us what your story is. Yes. Okay, so I, I don't have a story like um, Doreen's own because I'm not divorced, <laughs> I'm married. But I've had um, periods in my marriage that I thought was really difficult. And at that point, I thought oh, divorce was an option. Somehow, I didn't get divorced. And for me, I think that what has kept me in marriage, and this is my 11th year. Mm, it's a long time. Yes, it's because um, I learned how to empower myself. I learned how to love myself. And I defined myself 
as a complete woman who is enough and therefore does not tolerate outside interferences in my marriage. No matter who you are, your opinion does not cross my gate. Okay. No. So that, that is what has held my marriage. My marriage. But before I got married, well, so uh, <laughs> um, inter-tribal marriages and other things. I, my husband is a very um, a can. People said all kinds of things. What did they say? Well, so p external people will say, oh, as for an ever, if you marry him, he will always marry someone who is from their hometown. Your husband is ever too? Yeah. Did he do that? After. Ah. <laughs> okay. But he didn't do it during the During, okay. Yeah. So people said those things um, and others. But um, I had a conversation with him before we entered into marriage. I didn't want to deal with stereotypes. So even if, in, in my own mind, I thought at some point in my marriage that maybe his parents didn't, la his parents didn't like me. But um, I decided that it wasn't the parents I was married to, it was him. And so we make our decisions together. So um, for me, the biggest conflict has been outside um, Interferences, like someone coming to say, and well, so judging from Doreen's story, for instance, like they had challenges and they went to places. My first child is special needs. My first child has cerebral palsy. So I can imagine if Doreen had a child and that child had cerebral palsy, what would have happened? But I made a firm decision that I wasn't taking my daughter anywhere it was going to be me and my God. So if you have a place, if someone came to tell me that, oh, this child, it may be this, it may be that, I'll tell you, take care and go. Because I want to go. My husband, no, I won't go. You know, my husband can't even come to tell me that, oh, someone said this has happened. I, he knows what will happen. You know, someone can come to my house and say, oh, your daughter that has a celebrity is because of ABC. You can't point to my family. No, I will walk you out of my house. How did you come to this very strong place? I have been a strong person all my life, even though I don't look it. I'm a very, very strong-willed person. My husband knew it before we got in. People told him that, hey, this lady, can you? Because I am strong. If you deal with me, you know that I have very strong opinions about what I want in life. And so you don't, and I do have my conversations with my husband, like, this is what I want. Do you want it? If he says yes, and he goes out and comes back and says no, it will be a yes, because he's already said yes, and it won't change. Yes? Yeah. Yes. So maybe my points of conflict had always been those issues, like things we have discussed, and then he's gone out and come back and say, oh, I think it's the other way around. Then fire will break a bit. But then we somehow kind of come to where we want to go. You know, so mine, I think what has kept it was, is that I haven't allowed a lot of external interferences into do this and do that. I do what I feel is right for me. What's the one thing that drove you to that point where you felt like, look, perhaps divorce is an option I should consider here? Okay, so, um, <laughs> I, it's interference. You know, I like how you laugh and then you make strong points. <laughs> like, she's like, ha, 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 ha. Okay. but I'm not going to change my mind. <laughs> so, okay. So I think it was, the, the biggest thing was the, the interference. Interference. So, um, something happened. You know, I told you my first child has um, a disability. Cerebral palsy. Yes. Yeah, so following her, I made um, decisions about how my child best should be and who should be there and who shouldn't. And that was a big issue because at some point I was going to give birth and I said I didn't want anybody to come. To Me, the hospital. To the hospital, I wanted, I wanted to have a time with my child before anybody came in, you know. So me, my mom is not alive. So the usual thing is to have your husband's mother come in. But I said, oh, I will prefer that I handle it myself. 
instead of my husband. Well, at the hospital or when you came home? At the hospital. So okay. I didn't want... But that was the biggest issue. They thought, hey, why is she saying we shouldn't come in? So that nearly broke the marriage because... That single thing. Yeah. Because at that, they decided they won't have anything to do with the child's name. Is nothing, I mean, nothing. You know, and I think he got a lot of pressure from them to maybe teach me a lesson or something. You know, and I'm not someone who let my husband teach me a lesson like that. What does that mean? <laughs> no. So, you know, Doreen in her story said, though, she wasn't working and all those things. So she depended on her husband. I don't. I, I mean, we are married, but I want to have my money. <laughs> and like in my book, I talk about those things. I want to have my money. I want to control my area of local. So if... My husband decides that to lock me out of the house. I'll go and get a hotel and sleep in for one week and feel comfortable. You know, I will let you see me chilling outside in the hotel. <laughs> yes, I, I, won't, I won't feel, I won't um, make myself, I won't pity myself. No, I will I find like friends. Yes, I'll find friends. I don't have friends ordinarily. I don't have friends. But when something happens and I need to have friends, I'll do that. I will find something to do, something exciting. Go to the beach, uh, even if I don't like to go to the beach. Or do something that makes you see that that makes you feel that you are not important. Yes, and okay. and 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 I think that is one thing that has helped me, because I think it's a message I drum to my husband every day that I value myself. I am enough. I am complete. I am everything without you. Loving you is good, but if you are not there, I go on with my life. And I think for me, that draws him to me most of the time. So maybe that is why we, ne we, we were near divorce, but we never got to divorce because he got to know who the definition of this woman was. How did you overcome this problem with his family and your baby? And if you don't mind my asking, why didn't you want them there? Okay. <laughs> so, well, you know we are in Ghana, Africa, and there's a lot of spiritual whatever surrounding everything. So when my first child had um, cerebral palsy, a lot of things were said to me, you know. The same way maybe my, uh, things were said to my husband. So you, people will tell you that, oh, this is coming from your husband's family, is that, is that, and all those things. So, um, and I had a second child who nearly got into the same <laughs> because my second son, was, my daughter had jaundice and then it resulted in cerebral palsy. Then I had a son who also had jaundice and it's just like divine intervention that my son was fine, like now fine and everything. So when I got pregnant the third time, I was protective, very protective of myself. Understandable. I didn't want people to come. I mean, if it was whatever, people had said whatever, I had not gone anywhere. But if it was that, then let me just be with me and my child and see if this will happen or not. And so that was a decision. It wasn't with any bad intention that I didn't like his family or anything, but the family misinterpreted it that, oh, it means that I think they are not good. You know, so they did all kinds of things. But How did you resolve it? Resolve? I think my husband got to a point where, where he made his family know that it was me that he loved and that um, there's a need to separate his family from me as in his new family, as in me and his children, and then his father and mother and siblings. So we don't really, even now, I don't have a problem with his family, but I hardly speak with them. I hardly go there, they hardly come to me. They speak with their son. My children go on vacations there and other things. But between me and them, I have kept a distance. And my husband is okay. So he doesn't bother you at all? No. The same way that when I feel that there's a negative energy coming, like if you are my friend and I feel you are not good for me, I'll let you get out of my life. If, I, if someone in my family I feel is not a good person for me, that person will be expelled from my life. And so if someone in my husband's family I feel is not being a good energy for me, you'll be expelled from my life like I'll treat anybody. 
So it won't be like, oh, because I'm married to this person, it's negative energy, but I'm going for it. You know what you're saying sounds like the ultimate of self, <laughs> like self-sufficiency. Like, you know, like that's the ultimate. I don't know. I, do you feel like you could ever get there? Yes, currently I'm there. I don't feel like I could get there though. Mm, I don't yes. feel that way. Well, but I, I don't know. But I like, I'm, that. I'm listening to you and I'm thinking, wow, wow. But I'm wondering if I could ever... I think so I, I developed that in I think I developed that in marriage. Even for the title of my book, you Near know, divorce, yeah. People were like, Hey, so your husband made you publish a book like this without made you. <laughs> without looking at content, you know. Hey, so what will your even when I was launching the book, people were calling like, Hey, so will your husband come for the book lunch? Like, was he there? He was there, very okay. supportive. He sells the book for me. Okay. He delivers <laughs> You know, because he's got to know who this person is. And I give him freedom. You know, so things like um, him cheating or things like that doesn't cross my mind. Do you care if he cheated? If he cheated and I got to know, I'll care. But the point is, from the first time, first day I got married, I told myself that, look, one of the things I won't bother myself about is maybe my husband is talking to another person, lady, then I'm worried or whatever. No. Why not? Why should I? Why not? I mean, we're, we're human beings. We, we want our things to you know, belong to us. If you love a person, unless you are in a polygamous relationship or some kind of shared partnership, <laughs> you, you, you should feel a hint of jealousy if your partner was with someone else. No, so I... So, for his, my husband works in... Uh, an institution where he sees a lot of ladies and other things. You know. I'm not the, um, the type that wants to maybe dress all the time and all those things. But he saw me and liked me and got married to me. So when you get married, people will say, hey, you, your hair, you have to be doing this, you know. And I said, I want my hair to be the way it is. Well, it's beautiful. I like it. You, but, like, I mean, people say things that... Um, bring you ideas. You know, there was a time my husband left his phone in the house. And then when he got to the office, he called and said, oh, I left my phone. Will you come to town today so that you bring it to me? And I said, oh, I'm not coming to town today, but I'll keep it for you. I picked the phone. It wasn't switched off or anything. And put it up somewhere till he came. I don't have the time to go looking at his messages and thinking, oh, what lady is he looking with? Uh, Why, though? Well, Are you in love with your husband? I am, but we, we, you know, he is very, like, um, open, transparent with me. So he picks a lady on his way to work and says, oh, today I picked the lady. We had this conversation. The lady even gave me a, a phone number. And, and I said, hey, then you got scholar. We talk. We are here. We've made things. Like, we've shouted it's things easy. in. Yes, we've shouted things in. Whatever. So if I wear Doreen, someone calls me and say, your husband is with another lady. I won't rush back from Kumase to come and see you. No. And I, I developed that self-love in marriage. You weren't like that before? No. I used to care a lot about a, um, what is he, whatever. But I got to a... And I told you I have a child with this. That is a, a very stressful life already. So if I have a child with disability and I get a husband who is worrying me and whatever, how will my life be? So at a point in my life, I prioritize me. Me. So... <sighs> wow. Wow. <laughs> you have me spellbound. Anyway... Is it possible for all of us to get to this level of self-sufficiency and self-love so much so that other things that happen outside of our person would not bother us? We'll find out when we come back. You're watching We Got This Africa. We Got This.
to you in every drop. Feels great to have a hearty, healthy family. Phytol Sunflower Cooking Oil. Also cholesterol free for tasty, healthy meals. Love your food, love your life. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. You welcome back. This is the show that brings you real information in the most honest way possible among us girls. I'm chatting with Doreen and Hannah and Charlie. I don't know how you have done this. I don't know how you have been able to bring yourself to this level of self-sufficiency, so to speak. And I was asking you earlier, do you think that you can get to this level? Because I don't think I can. Currently, I am. You are? Yes. Okay, tell me about it. I think it. when it gets to a point, you need to know what you want. Okay. Yes. You need to set standards. Let people know who you are. Be you. It doesn't mean being you means you are sacrificing or you are doing things to please people or you are bullying people around. No. Just be you. Do the things that make you feel comfortable. I think in doing so, it shouldn't hurt other people's feelings. Just consider other people. But make sure you do what satisfies you. Yes. But yeah, that, that's a valid point. How do you feel about other, like your husband's feelings okay, and so. you know, his family's feelings about the things that you okay, do? So, so, so let me tell you what has made me how I am, how, what has brought me to this level. So my parents got divorced when I was 10. The divorce had a nasty impact on my mother, but also a very nasty impact on us, me and my siblings. So when I was growing up, one of the things that was in my mind all the time was a man will never trample over me. Even in my relationships, before I got married, I got married at the age of 29. But before I got married, if you were a guy who approached me, I will interview you. <laughs> um, be sure I want or do not want. And made you know that. So I... There were a lot of guys who will come around and I will let you just go because you don't fit into my standards. Before I got married to my husband, I was in a relationship with someone for maybe six, seven years. Mm. We were about to get married, like just about two months to get married and the guy did something and I said, and that time we had done everything. I used to go to the UK because he was there to go and shop for our wedding. Things were in my house. He did something which I felt this, I can't do. And I said, take your things. It was two months to a time. He said, take your things. Take your things. I don't want you. And that was it. I ended that relationship. What did he do? <laughs> a, long, a very long story. Okay. But it's, it's, he, he did something which showed that he was selfish and he didn't have my interest. So I made him go. I was 27 at that time. And people thought that, hey, 27, you had someone for this long and you have... I said, he should go. He spoke to everybody. I said, no. Then I met my husband. I think um, about a year after. And we, we, we got married within a year because I was sure of the this person. The man. Yes, I, I had the criteria for a man. So it wasn't like just any man will come and because I'm 29, I'll settle. No. And I had standards. So... I wasn't going to just get pregnant or something. And <laughs> what is the place of compromise for you? Because I think I'm, a, I'm my own woman. I think I know what I want and I do what I want mm. most of the time. But I also always take into consideration, you know, how my husband feels and what he thinks because, you know, we're together. And so, you know, we, we must have things must mutually benefit us yeah. or we must decide that, well, this benefits you only, but I, I agree. Next time, that will benefit me only, but she would agree, so to speak. Like, we have a system that works and I always care about what, how he feels and what he thinks. Where is the room for that compromise if you are, you know, in a relationship? Because you can't always insist on having your way. Yes, that's true. That will be hard. So I, I don't always insist on having my okay. way. But for example, I told you I have a daughter with cerebral palsy. When you have a child like that, people have opinions. 
People will tell you, do this, go to this doctor, go that, go to this herbalist. Without considering your health, your mental health, you know. So when people come in and say, oh, take the child to this place and my husband agrees and I don't. I won't force on you. I'll tell you if you like, take her, but I want to be part of it. It's her child. You know, so I'm not hurting you with what I'm doing. If you think this will work for the child, take the child and go with her. I'll support you with prayers from afar, but I won't be involved in it. I see. My mental health is so important. I see. Ha. Huh. Do you think you might ever get married again? Yes. What would you do differently this time? I think this time, mm, I'll make sure that um, I have money. Have money? Yes, I won't so lie. So if you were advising someone who was getting married, you say, first thing, have money. No, you should have money. Okay. You should have money. What you should be financially stable. Because anything can happen. There are times you can get into misunderstandings and your husband can decide that I'm not giving you this money or I will decide to punish you. Where would you get that money from? You need to be self-reliant. So have money. Yes, you should have money. What else? Then, that's what I said, set standards. Just as Hannah said, go into communication, talk, tell him the things you expect of him and let him also tell you the things he expects of you. Then you come towards a compromise. Maybe at this point, I can't do this. You know, we are humans and we can fail ourselves, but let him know. I always tell people, just be honest. If you are into flats, let me know you are into flats. If you are in for this, I think honesty is very, very important. It's the best policy. Yes. So let the person know this is who you are. If he appreciates you, you are good to go. How have you come to this level of, should I say self-sufficiency also? How did you learn to love yourself like this, unlike before? I, I have, I'm the last born of four girls. I have... The mid two, I have two big sisters, and I say they are my mentor. My dad, my dad, after everything, never disappointed me. And my two sisters, they've always been there for me. And I noticed that though they are married, they are focused on their jobs. They are focused on making money. That's, that's, that's what I noticed. So anytime I go visiting, I see that their husbands respect them. They know they have wives, and they know that their wives are capable. It doesn't mean they disrespect their husbands, but I realize that no, these girls being married are educating themselves. What do I do? After my uni, okay, fine. What next? Let me get back to school. I told them and they supported me. They say, empower yourself. Be who you want to be. Go back to school. Be the best you can so that when the right man meets you, I always say that, oh, I look at this woman, Esla. Look at her age. At her age, she was able to get somebody. So I think I should be happy with myself first. Get the things age I has want. nothing, nothing to do with meeting the right person. Well, you see, sometimes being alone is difficult. Yeah. I get to the point, sometimes I cry and all that. But I, I tell myself, look, girl, get up, do something. You see, and I, I look up to my sisters and they have been an inspiration. Every morning, my dad calls me, madam, have you prayed? What's next do you have in mind? You know, as a reminder. And I know I have a daughter. She's 10 now. A time to come, she'll be in secondary school. She'll be like, mommy, I need you to visit me, my friend. I need to be where she sees me and say, wow, mommy, I'm impressed. That's my mom. Yes. So I need to change the narrative for people that you can do it regardless of being married or being single. I think what Hannah said, yes, love yourself. I didn't love myself. I thought I would find solace in a man. I'm not saying that uh, I'm complete without, but... But I you think, are, though. Yes, but let me say, sometimes you say, oh, you can be alone, you know, for that reason. You need a man at times, but be yourself. Know who you are. That man will come and he'll be like, wow, my wife, hey, my wife, they don't go there. Oh, she's, <laughs> she's knowledgeable. She's eloquent. She's this, you know, he's not shy to take you out. So I always tell people, be yourself. When they come, tell them. The fact that you are feeling lonely doesn't mean you should tolerate everything. When they come, put it to them. The one who loves you, just like Hannah said, will stay. The one who loves you will stay. 
Wow. Thank you guys for sharing. And I agree with most of the things you have said. And yeah, being single is hard, but being married is hard too. Being in a relationship is hard. Being divorced is hard. Everything is hard. Yes. Life is not easy. But one thing you can do for sure is love yourself while you're living whatever hard life might, you, know, you, you might be experiencing. When you love yourself, things are smoother. You have a clearer head. You can figure things out easier. So, hey, I'm, I'm happy to be in, in your presence, both of you. You're both really strong, amazing women. I'm glad we've had this conversation. Thank you both so very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. And hey, I really do hope you've learned a thing or two on today's episode of We Got This Africa. Love is great. It's beautiful. Opinions of others would always come in. Whether or not you should take those opinions is absolutely up to you. But one thing I agree with 100% from today's conversation is loving yourself is the ultimate. You are a child of God, and so you deserve all of the love that you can get and all the love that you can give yourself. My name is Na Ashoko, and thank you for watching this episode of We Got This Africa. this life is important to prioritize self-love because when you love yourself you live a life of goodness and I agree with the fight all tag you deserve a life of goodness you deserve a life of goodness yeah. but I, you know it's sometimes it's so difficult to come to that place of self-love like I love myself we all say it but how do you know like I'm loving myself it's a process they say trust the process all the experiences you go through in life will put you to that point where you feel that you are important. Do I have to have money to do that? No. <laughs> but you, when, when you love yourself, you love to work for yourself and earn a living. You wouldn't want to leave yeah. on handouts and yeah. other things. Well, we deserve a life of a goodness, life of no? Goodness, yes. <laughs> we deserve a life of goodness. Cheers. This Africa is an April Communications production with support from Kaiser. Proudly brought to you by Frytol. Frytol, you deserve a life of goodness.